I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to a bonus episode of The Cool Parts Show. We've had a couple of episodes lately about some high-performance polymers, PEC and PEAK, and we wanted to make this video to just talk about the differences between these two materials and their similarities. Those episodes are number 60, about 3D printing of polyether ketone ketone, or PEC, and work being done by Oxford Performance Materials, and episode number 62, about a company named Curativa and the success they're having with 3D printing PEAK, polyether ether ketone. We're going to hear from both of these companies on the differences between those materials. From kind of a high level of categorization, both of these materials are semi-crystalline polymers. So that's in contrast to an amorphous polymer where the molecular chains are sort of randomly dispersed. A semi-crystalline polymer, as it heats and cools, the molecular chains will form these sort of orderly structures, these, these crystalline structures. That creates some challenges in 3D printing, which we're going to talk about, but it also imparts some desirable material characteristics. Both of these materials are part of the polyaryl ether ketone, or PAKE family, materials which are known for their high strength, their chemical resistance, their low flammability, and their high use temperatures, among other things. So the impression I take about these materials is that PEAK wants to solidify by crystallizing. And that crystalline structure gives it very good properties, mechanical properties, thermal properties, uh, but that mechanism of solidification, crystallization, comes with some shrinkage, about 2%, and that makes 3D printing challenging. But my sense is, PEC is more of a compromise. It still has very good material properties and a crystalline state, but it also has an amorphous state. And that, in that state, it is more malleable and more conducive to success in 3D printing. Yeah, I think that's true. Both of these are high temperature polymers. You're going to need a hotter than usual 3D printer to work with them probably. Uh, but I think it is fair to say that PEC is going to be, it's going to print a little bit more like an amorphous polymer. And so there might be some processing advantages there. We should say both of these materials are challenging to 3D print with. Both of them offer excellent properties potentially that, that make them very useful and very useful to use in additive manufacturing. We have covered Two different companies succeeding with these different materials for making medical implants through 3D printing, and we're going to hear from both of them about the differences between these materials. We'll take these one at a time. So first up, PEC. Here is Scott DeFelice. He is the founder and CEO of Oxford Performance Materials, or OPM. PEC is a um, high-performance thermoplastic. It's a semi-crystalline polymer, and it's in a field of called polyketones. And then there's other polymers in that field, but they all have a similar characteristics of high temperature tolerance, extreme purity, uh, chemical resistance, biocompatibility, uh, excellent mechanical properties. So PEC's a pure thermoplastic. Like all thermoplastics, it can be processed in all the conventional ways. So you can machine it like normal subtractive uh, process. You can injection mold it. You can extrude it. You can make films. You can make fibers. So we started this 20 years ago thinking, look, you can machine great implants out of PEKK and it's pure. And, but since then, we found out some amazing things. Well, you know, one of them is we could print with it, right? So, and, and that has to do with the very specific chemical nature of this one PEKK polymer that allows you to print with it because it has an affinity to stick to itself, right? The main issue when you want to use a high performance thermoplastic in um, printing so you have to have a machine that operates at the right temperature range. There were existing machines that, that do that. Um, but we, we also had tools that allow us to sort of modify the melting temperature of our polymers. The printing is done in-house. Um, we use EOS machines that we've subsequently modified for the purpose of our high temperature process. A powder bed melting process is, is really a pretty advantageous process. And that allows you to get fully consolidated, fully dense parts with highly repeatable uh, mechanical performance. OPM is applying selective laser sintering to make medical implants and other types of parts out of PEC powder. They are using modified SLS printers to do this, and they're having success with this already. In our full-length episode, we talked to them about suture anchors, these little surgical fasteners that they are manufacturing using this method right now. So that's PEC and how OPM is succeeding with it. Here is Scott's view on PEC versus PEAK. 
So where they're the same is they're both very pure materials uh, and they're both biocompatible and they're both uh, mechanically very much like bone. That's kind of where it ends. The, the big difference has become in the area of the cell response and that's really in terms of the antibacterial response and uh, benefits of PEC and the bone apposition and the bone benefits of PEC. Um, those are sort of at a very basic chemistry level, the, a, a difference. And then finally, you know, what we have talked about some is the ability to 3D print with PEC in a powder bed process to make robust mechanical structures. They, PEC definitely differentiates itself there because once you're in that powder bed process, your economics also become very favorable versus um, peak, which can be made in, in FDM. Scott sort of ends on that note. The 3D printing of peak is going to have to involve a process like FDM or FFF. And that's a point of agreement. Let's switch gears here and hear from Curativa, which is using an extrusion style 3D printing process to work with Peak. Here are Todd Reith, Vice President of Emergent Technologies and Additive Manufacturing, and Eric Irby, Chief Science Officer at Curativa. Peak is a member of the polyarylate family. It has unique history, actually, in inner body implants. The very first inner body implant was the Brannigan cage. It was, I believe, cleared in 1997 or 98. And it was a carbon fiber reinforced uh, PEC implant. And that morphed into uh, the PEAK implants, which are probably 95 or higher percent of the market in terms of polymers that do not resorb, do not go away. The reason why we're using PEAK is because it's a proven material as an implant. And so we didn't want to have to go through the process of revalidating or, or convincing the FDA that some new polymer is um, safe within the body. We already had the, the scientific support of using PEAK. As Scott hinted earlier, they're essentially limited to an FFF style process. In Curativa's case, that exact process is called fused strand deposition. They developed it. We get into how it works in the full length episode. You can catch that. But even that method of FFF printing is challenging. Peak has a melt temperature around 340, 350 degrees centigrade, which is pretty hot. The temperature where it begins to soften is much lower. It's 145. And so you have this range where depending on where you put your nozzle, the diameter of the nozzle, the temperature in the environment and the chamber where you're printing the part, all these things control the, the semi-crystalline to crystalline nature of each layer that you're building. By pulling strands and, and sort of this idea of the fused strand deposition, we're actually pulling strands much like you would do uh, glass where you can create these uh, interesting tension within the layers and that by nature uh, gives us greater material properties in, in strength and durability that you wouldn't see if we were just doing like a laser sintering process of powder or just depositing small amounts of material. So these two companies, OPM and Curativa, are succeeding with these different materials, PEC and PEAK, but they're both making similar things. They're making medical implants. That's because these materials have some similar properties that make them good for that application. They both have stiffness that's similar to natural human bone. They can both offer good osseointegration, and they're both easier to see through on an x-ray than a metal implant would be. There's a lot more you can do with these materials too. Peak and PEC are also being used for aerospace components, for downhole components in the oil and gas industry, for parts in electric vehicles, and more. If you want to hear more from our experts and learn about how they are applying PEC and PEAK for medical implants, you can check out those full-length episodes. We'll link those in the show notes below, as well as some additional resources about these materials. Thank you for watching. Whoa!